Hey y'all, hi, this is it, the big one. Eyeshadow declutter part two, palettes. Eyeshadow palettes occupy such an interesting place in the mind and heart of the makeup lover. I think that they are the kind of makeup that lasts the longest. It's like the hardest to use up an eyeshadow palette. It's easier to use up a concealer, a foundation, even a blush. But I think that for a lot of us, eyeshadow palettes are also the most compelling kind of color cosmetic. And a lot of people, both on YouTube and off of YouTube, a lot of you at home, I think, collect eyeshadow palettes in the way that one might collect books for a library. And the thing is, because they take so long to use up, if you collect them the way that you collect books for a library, then you only end up using each individual palette about as frequently as you might read a book in your home library, like maybe once or twice a year if that book is lucky. Of course, that's drawing it through through to its most extreme conclusion, but you take my point. A lot of people have more eyeshadow palettes than they have any other kind of makeup, and yet they take the longest to use up, and that leaves an eyeshadow palette collection in kind of a unique position when it comes to the space it takes up, the way in which it's in rotation, the way in which we interact with it, the literal space that it occupies both physically and in the mind and heart of the person who loves and owns the makeup. I think that a lot of my friends who have huge eyeshadow palette collections have made peace with the idea that it's like a library. That's what they want. And I absolutely have no criticism of that decision. If it's a conscious choice, if you enjoy having that kind of abundance, then go and get your life. And I love that for you. But the choice that I've made for myself, the conscious choice I've made is that I don't want that. And my desire for a really small, manageable, edited eyeshadow palette collection, it doesn't necessarily come from a place of feeling like I need to use up my palettes. I mean, you know, the big difference between books and eyeshadow palettes, one of the big differences is that makeup is technically a perishable good. It's a consumable in a way that a book isn't. So a book, you can read it once or twice a year and you can do that for the rest of your life. But an eyeshadow palette, you use it once or twice a year for a couple of years and then it's expired. But that's actually not my reason for wanting to downsize my already relatively manageable by many people's standards eyeshadow palette collection, my reason is simple. I want to simplify. I just don't want to have this many choices. I don't want to have to keep some of them in storage and one or two on my vanity and rotate them out, which is what I've been doing for the past six months. It hasn't really been working out for me. I haven't really been using most of my palettes. I've kind of been forgetting that they're there. And then they sit there in storage with what is for me this kind of clogged static energy. I would rather have nothing there than have them sitting there in storage waiting for me to remember them and rotate them out once or twice a year. So my goal because of what will feel best for me is to edit this down to a number of palettes that can actually fit in my vanity drawers and be considered every day. I want to be able to just look at all my eyeshadow palettes every day and be like which one of you do I want to use and for this to turn into that I'm going to have to let go of most of them. So hang on to your hats. This is likely to be the most shocking of my series of declutter videos here in the winter of 2022. And lastly, before we start, a little bit of perspective for you. There is actually only one eyeshadow palette in this entire group that I bought with my own money because I wanted it. I'll tell you what it is when we get there. All of the rest of them were either sent by brands for me to review, purchased by my business for me to review, or given to me as as gifts. That's going to make it easier for me to pare it down. And I hope that that information will also make it easier for you to put the declutter that you're about to see in perspective with relation to your own life and your own makeup collection. And now let's get into the meat of the video. Okay, we're going palette by palette, and I am throwing myself a softball to begin with. This is the Samaya palette. This is a good one to start with because here's the thing. Even though I absolutely smeared this palette in my review, if you haven't seen it, I recommend it. It's a very detailed and interesting review because I kind of wanted to like the makeup, but then I really didn't. In that video, I was like, I'm definitely not going to keep this palette. 
I hate it. I mean, that was basically the gist. But every time I think about actually decluttering it, I struggle because I love this shiny black so much. There's just a little part of me that doesn't want to let that go. But I know that I'm not keeping this palette, especially on this occasion the occasion of this really serious thorough declutter. It is an easy decision, but it has a little bit of a pang, and that's why it's a good one to start with. Maybe that pang will help me sort of break the membrane of reluctance to get rid of anything that sometimes constrains me at the very beginning of a declutter. This is one that I actually think I want to keep. This was a gift from my friend Khaki, the famous Khaki of Khaki Reviews Beauty. One of the things I'm doing in this really vicious collection-wide declutter is I'm not letting sentimental value keep me from decluttering stuff. So I've let go of a couple of really precious gifts from really precious friends for really practical reasons. We'll see how the collection looks at the end, but here are the reasons why I think I'm going to keep this. It's very, very fresh, right? Khaki just gave it to me as a gift a handful of months ago. Many of these palettes here have been languishing in my collection for years. This, no. This is the NARS Summer Unrated palette. It's from this year. So it's got a lot of life left in it. And then, you know, I like it. I've used it several times, but not enough. I used it for, I would say, close to a month after Khaki gave it to me, and then I switched it out for something else on top of my vanity, and I haven't used it since then. So it's like this fresh, beautiful NARS eyeshadow palette. It's fun to reconnect connect with NARS because it's a brand that I used to really, really love, like, so much that I couldn't resist buying way too much stuff from NARS before my no-buy year, before I changed my spending habits. I had all these passionate feelings about NARS, and I haven't owned an eyeshadow palette from them in a really long time. So it just, it still feels like a juicy, special opportunity that I haven't really yet taken full advantage of. I still feel like I'm looking forward to using it. I still feel really excited to have it, and I think that it could have a place place in my edited eyeshadow palette collection, which is the place of a palette that sort of dictates a color scheme to me, where I pull it out and I try to use just it and it sort of leads me in a direction that I don't usually take. These sort of peachy colors aren't my first choice for eyeshadow, but this palette is interesting. It has like a rust quality and even a little bit of a pinky berry bronzy quality that pulls it back from being too orange. So in this first round, this is a keep but we shall see. There's gonna be a final reckoning at the end. Okay, Kaleidos Sci-Fi Green. This is the first of what I think is going to be an interesting category of makeup in this declutter. It is a palette that has removable pans, and there's one eyeshadow in it that I really love. It's this black. It's the best black eyeshadow I think I've ever used. I'm constantly reaching for this palette and opening it just to use this black. It hasn't lost its power after many years, and this palette is many years old. I'm also constantly popping it out and including it in my custom palettes. It's super velvety, super pigmented. It performs exactly the way I want a black to perform, and I would really, really miss it if it were gone. But the other five shadows here, I never use them. So I'm going to take out this black. I can't find my, I still can't find my depotting tool. It might actually be like lost forever because it's been months. I'm a mess. I'm going to declutter the rest of this palette, which I don't usually love doing because I try to give my eyeshadow palettes away to friends and family, even the ones that I've used a little bit. But this one is so old that I'm not going to do that with it. So I feel okay breaking up the party and just keeping this, my precious, and adding it to my single eyeshadow collection. Okay. Now we're cooking with gas and we're going to have to be because it's time, y'all. Look at this. The titans are falling in this declutter. <laughs> That's what I think. The titans being, well, I don't want to speak too soon. <laughs> this is one of them. This is part of the issue, but even if this hadn't happened, it would still be time for this to go. This palette is four years old in my collection, but it was a gift to me from my friend Lauren of Lauren May Beauty. She had had it for a while and then she decluttered it from her collection. So it wasn't brand new when I acquired it. Even though some powder products can outlast their expiration date by years and some of them seem to go forever, in my experience with Natasha Nona eyeshadows, they go off after a couple of years, especially the mattes. I mean, particularly the mattes. They just don't blend in the way that they 
they did when they were new. And in this one, even some of the shimmers have started going off. I love including this shadow, this one, that one, this one. Like, I love these sort of grungy, rusty wine, taupe, and ashes of roses mattes. These are some of my favorite mattes to include when I'm making my own palette. And I also have really enjoyed this one right here. It's kind of an unusual, slightly purplish, deep brown. I've used this palette a lot as a resource. And the last couple times, not even couple, the last several times, I would say for the last year at least, when I've included these mattes and even the shimmers that I like in custom palettes, I've tried to use them and they just haven't performed. It's life is over. I have to admit that and let it go. That was the Natasha Genona Lila palette. Sorry, I didn't say the name out loud. The Flower Beauty Jungle Lights palette. This was a gift from Lacey and I have loved it so much. I actually filmed an entire video reviewing this, like a dedicated review of this palette. It's a really, really great formula. Especially for a drugstore palette, I mean, it can't be beat. It can't be beat at the drugstore, and there are a lot of high-end and luxury brands that can't beat this formula either. I was dead set on decluttering it, and now I am causing myself to struggle by swatching, in particular, this pink. Because here's the thing about this palette. All the shadows are good, because they're all the same formula. But this one, this sort of silvery, slightly taupey, grungy pink, this palette is really all about that shadow for me. Like, it's just that. I only reach for it for that. Since I reviewed it, and on the occasion of my review of it, I used some of the other ones. But since then, I've only ever reached for this palette to use Use that pink eyeshadow. What happens is I'm looking over my collection and I see it and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna put that pink eyeshadow all over my lids today. I love that look. And I've done that a ton of times, but that makes it hard for me to keep this palette through this declutter in particular. And these aren't magnetic. I can't pop them out the way I could that Kaleidos eyeshadow. I could try to depot that one shadow by going through the whole process of heating it up and softening the glue and trying to pop it out and it might break and then I might have to repress it and all of that stuff. But here's why I'm not not gonna try to do that. Okay, they're really not the same. I think of these two shadows as sort of being the same. They're really not the same. Well, on my finger, once they're swatched, they look much more similar than they do here spread out. And, you know, built up on the lids, they're both going to take on this kind of silvery intensity. But it's because of the texture, that really satisfying, crushy texture, that they occupy kind of the same place for me in my heart. This, the Pat McGrath Moonlit Seduction Palette, is one of my most used palettes since I got it for review. I've used it constantly, like weekly and often multiple times a week. So even though they're not the same, I'm, I've been kind of feeling like, oh, I have that crushy sort of silvery pink in this palette, which I'm definitely keeping. This is making me want to just like see if I can pry it out even without softening the glue. This might be a disaster. Yeah, it's not coming out. It's really stuck in there. So I'm going to declutter this palette. You know, if I'm, it's like keeping me awake at night, then what I'll do is I'll just come and dig some of this eyeshadow. It's really, really creamy. And so I think it will reconstitute easily. I'll dig some of it out and like I'll empty out a metal pan of one of the singles that I declutter and I'll press it into that pan if I'm really feeling that serious about it. But I think maybe I won't be. I think it's okay, you know? It's like beautiful things come and beautiful things go and you don't have to hold on to them forever. And this has served me really well. And there are all of these other beautiful eyeshadows, beautiful things in my life. It's gonna be okay. If I declutter this and don't retain that shadow, it's gonna be okay. And I really feel that. I'm not just trying to tell myself that. I really genuinely feel that. It's like my heart is okay with letting it go. And my mind, this rational part of my mind is like, but it's so great. You have to keep everything that's so great. But my heart is okay with letting it go. And that's what matters. Needless to say, she's staying. I've been keeping my Moonlit Seduction palette in this cardboard packaging because I have another Mothership palette, Midnight Sun. Probably my biggest criticism of the Pat McGrath Mothership palettes is that they lo all look exactly the same from the outside. This black packaging, this beautiful lacquered black packaging that, you know, I love objectively. When these two palettes are floating around, they look exactly the same and I genuinely don't know which is which. I cannot remember which, like there's no way. And so I find myself opening them and just hoping that I've got the right one. I can't imagine how frustrating it much must be for people who have more than two if they don't keep them in 
in this packaging. So I think what happened to the packaging of this one, the cardboard part, is that Smidge destroyed it. Back when I first got this for review, I was fostering a kitten and she got a hold of it and it was just completely wrecked. I wish I had them both, you know, because it would be really pretty to be keeping them stored that way. But at least this way, I don't get them mixed up. And, you know, Midnight Sun is staying. It hasn't ended up being the most versatile palette for me, but I love the dark brown. I love this kind of creamy, slightly metallic blending shade. When I want a dark green, this is the first one I think of, but this is really the star. It's the best wet look shadow that I have. And I actually use this almost the most of any of my palettes because I'm constantly opening it. I keep it like right on my vanity, right within reach because I'm constantly opening it just to, you know, get that shadow. This, the Harmony palette, it's the newest palette from Alter Ego. I like their formula. You know, they're decent, very inexpensive palettes. A good option if you really, really want to play around with a color scheme that they carry. You're not really sure you want to commit to something more high end. The formula is good enough for you to kind of like get it, but I definitely don't need to keep this. I've used a couple of them because I wore it in a video and, you know, I swatched it a little bit so that I could make sure the formula is still performing, but it's in good enough shape that I can easily give this one away to a friend. Okay, this one, the Kaleidos Flower Punk palette. Curiously, this is one that I have kind of been dreading because it's like every time I think about this declutter, I think about this palette and I think I don't want to get rid of the Kaleidos Flower Punk palette, but it makes sense to get rid of it. And so it's going to be like this weird moment where my, my heart and my brain are clashing on this one, but in the other direction. My heart wants to keep it and my brain is like, Hannah, you never ever use it, except for when I'm trying to dupe the vibes. I will often turn to this when I'm looking for like a color that I don't have a lot of. But even then, I often think I'm going to find the vibe dupe in here and I don't. I just like, I don't use it. I don't usually put this on my eyes. The thing that I love about it is everything except for its use value to me. I absolutely love this packaging. The mirror is this like magnetic panel. I might be wrong, but I think that this was limited edition. It's not available anymore, which also makes it defunct as like something with which to create content that might be relevant to people. But let me get back to saying what I love about it. So I love this like mirrored panel that slides off so that the palette is then just elegantly free of that sort of flapping mirror that other palettes have. The artwork, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And the way that it's like painted onto a mirror on top, slay. And then I love the color story. It's not for me in practice, but I love the execution of it. I love the relationship between the colors, the level of saturation of the colors. I just think it's designed so well in every way. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this in my keep pile. It is going to be a thing that I declutter at the end if I feel feel like I kept too much. Maybe it'll make it easier once I see the edited collection and I see how out of place it is as something that I never use. Maybe that'll make it easier for me to let it go. But if I end up with a pleasantly tiny collection at the end and this is part of it, I might keep it. And who knows, maybe it'll inspire me to use colors like this more. Okay, this is the one that I bought myself. It was recent. This is part of Pat McGrath's holiday collection this year, like this holiday. It's this little quint. It's called Bronze Bliss. I did review this and apply it on camera. I've kind of come to suspect that the formula is a little different than her usual eyeshadows. I've heard a lot of people say that. My experience kind of does bear that out. They're just a little bit less super intensely packed, pigmented, controllable in every single way. I usually use brushes with Pat McGrath's eyeshadows because I think that they're really meant to be manipulated to the absolute finest point of precision and control with a brush. These don't feel quite like that. I, I like use my fingers with them and buff them out and sort of fluff them all over the place, a little more like normal eyeshadows, like shadows from other brands. However, the colors, the textures, everything about it is perfect for me, and I use it all the time. Funnily enough, when I did that review, this one, because it has kind of a coppery tinge, is the one that I said disappointed me the most. I was hoping it wouldn't be coppery and it would be more of a neutral bronze. But this is the one I've ended up using the most. I constantly open this palette and put the merest touch of this all over my lids just to give them a tiny bit of sheen, like a satin sheen and a tiny bit of depth. But that coppery warmth makes it really blend into my skin and makes it just almost look like it's of 
love my skin, a subtle makeup look. I mean, I'm, I've worn it, again, like once or twice a week, every week since I've gotten it, worn it in that way. And sometimes I'll go in with the other ones to accent and make a more complex look. So this is definitely staying. The Gucci palette. I'm keeping it, y'all. I actually love using it. One of the things I'm looking forward to, as I am with all of my declutters, is having fewer things so that I can use the ones that I love more. I actually love the looks that I get with this. I actually I did a full review of this, so if you want to know everything, it was like a year ago. Try to remember to link it. I was very thorough about the formula in that and the colors. But here's how I'm feeling a year later. It isn't the top quality creme de la creme of formulas when it comes to longevity. Sometimes I get a little bit of that kind of creasiness. And maybe I said this in that review, I can't remember. It's these ones, you can actually see, they're the ones that I've used, right? Like this one, this one, and this one. And sometimes this kind of rusty red, but it's really these three and especially these two that I've used the most. I love the sort of ever so slightly satiny shine finish. I love the way that that looks. And when it starts to crease later in the day, it doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit of like soft Rowan vibes, like a little bit of that editorial crease. At this point, that's probably my main complaint with this formula, but it doesn't bother me that much, you know? They're on the softer side, these shadows, you know? But I am as in love with the packaging and the color story as I was before. I love to see it on my vanity. I love to open it. I love to look at it. It was also a gift from my husband. I think I might not keep this bag anymore. It's looking like pretty ratty, but I'm going to keep this. I'm looking forward to having it shine as a member of my much edited eyeshadow palette collection. ColourPop, it's a mood has been so great to have, endlessly useful when it comes to single shadow building my own palette videos, endlessly useful when it comes to duping the vibes. I quite like the ColourPop formula. I, I really quite like it. And this kind of has everything and all of the shadows are saturated or sort of off pure, like slightly grungy in the way that I like, like in slightly in the jewel tone direction or slightly in the muddy direction. It's just been great. However, I'm not going to keep it because it's not my precious. It's useful, you know, but even when I use it to dupe the vibes, use some of these shadows to create palettes, those shadows in those palettes, those little custom palettes that I've created are never my favorite of the ones that I've included in that palette. You know, it, they're just these sort of useful stopgap, checks all the boxes things. It's like they check all the boxes except the box of specialness and the box of lighting me up and making me feel those warm, fuzzy feelings. I'm not even gonna pop out any of the shadows. If I were to do that, I would probably take Ritual. I love a pressed glitter. I'd probably take Wanna Go. I end up using that one in a lot of custom palettes. I even love Echoes. This was in my most recent custom palette and I've used it a lot. But there's no part of me that's like, no, I don't wanna see it go. Every part of me is like, yeah, this is something that can get weeded out in the interest of simplifying and intensifying the specialness of the collection that I keep. Okay, these Viseart palettes, uh, this is kind of a tough one as well for me, sort of for similar reasons. These were PR, they were sent to me for review, and they're fantastic. I haven't decided about these yet. Like, I, I just don't have clarity on it. I think that it, this is a case where my he head is saying, keep them. Intellectually, it's like, keep them, and I'm sort of looking for reasons, but my heart is saying they're so practical, and then they don't have that, like, gooey deliciousness feeling. Like I think about my Pat McGrath palettes and I just, they feel gooey and delicious to me. And these just, they feel like really reliable, really well formulated, high-end makeup. I love this packaging the sort of foldable, they're so, they'd be so great for travel. It's really sturdy. I feel like they're really well protected in there. It's also compelling on a tactile level. Like these little palettes feel good to hold. They feel good to have around. And I'm constantly popping shadows out of here to include in my custom palettes or duping the vibe and stuff like that as well. I find them really, really useful. I just don't want them anymore. I don't long for them. Like if I, if someone took them away from me, I wouldn't long for them. I think it's because 
because they're this yard is all about matte shadows. You know what I mean? Like this is an all matte palette and this one is half mattes and half shimmers. Again, really practical, but I just don't like the shimmers very much. I think these will make really great palettes for someone else. That's the way that I'm going to make this make sense for me. All of the great qualities that have just been expounding upon, those are the reasons that these are going to really please someone else and work really well for someone else. They're just not a match for me. I've been making good use of them. I've been doing my best. They're just not the kind of thing that makes my heart double beat. All right, shall we do it? We're getting down to it. Here we go. The gold palette. Absolutely my precious. Probably my favorite eyeshadow palette that I've ever owned. A gift from my sister. You know, there's like a lot of sentimental value here. A lot of love. An absolute icon in the history of the YouTube channel, Hannah Louise Poston. You know, it's just like defined and contextualized so much of what I've done. So much of the way that I've talked about eyeshadow and doing eyeshadow and choosing not to buy eyeshadow and all of that. It's just been so such a banger for me. It's really old, right? It's, I, has it been four years? I think it's f exactly four years old. And you know, what I said before about Natasha Denona shadows applies even in this case. I haven't noticed these going off as much as I've noticed the Lila palette. The ones I tend to use the most in my custom palettes are this one, Dijon, and this one, this bronze, a soft kind of light but very neutral bronze. And of course, Kava and Sparks. I haven't touched this shadow in a long time. It's still really beautiful. Wow, I have feelings. Swatching it is reminding me of what it always was about this palette that slayed. You know what I mean? It was this, it was this kind of like crushy, slightly green shadow all over the lids and the way that it would light up the eyes with this like faceted kind of greenish gold. I really love this shadow in the abstract, but I don't like this color on me. So that one doesn't really make me want to keep it. And the the mattes, I, the only matte I ever really loved from this palette was the brown. But I actually think that this is one of the ones that feels like it's sort of going off. Sorry, I have a little bit of, it's a little bit of a Salt New York blush stuck under my thumbnail from when I was organizing things earlier. Welcome to my life. This is one that has, feels like it started to underperform to me, the dark brown. And I have dark browns that I really love in my Pat McGrath palette. Palettes. What I'm doing right now is I'm trying to decide if I want to keep any of these as singles. I think that that's probably, it's it's tough to break it up, right? One of the things that I love about this is how strong and focused of a color story it is. So many palettes these days, they try to do everything. They try to give you everything and then they kind of fail at doing anything truly inspiring. They stay too close to home, too close to the comfort zone. They don't feel cohesive because there's always like those safe shadows mixed into whatever strong colors the brand is trying to excite you with. And this, it's just, it's such a pure, powerful punch. And I love it for that. And I've always loved it for that. So it's tough to break them up. But this palette has got to go just as like a, a thing, a physical thing in my makeup collection. It's taking up space that at this point has become unwarranted given how little I'm actually opening this and using it as itself. So what am I going to retain? like what I'm going to keep from it. Swatching Oro here really makes me realize that I don't need to keep it. I love the crushy luster on the finger, but you know, it becomes a bit more dull in the swatch. These other three though, I think... Yeah, these still have a lot of life left in them, and it'll be fun to have them around as a reminder of what I loved about this palette. Obviously, Kava and Sparks are my most used eyeshadows from here, but they've been replaced. They've gotten old. They don't perform the way that they used to, and, you know, they're all, like, crustily crammed into the corners of the pans. But they've also been replaced. The really shiny, sheer, wet-look gold in the Moonlit Seduction palette is everything that Kava ever was and more. And Sparks, it's that white gold was never really my favorite. I feel like I get what I always wanted from this from the really shiny shade in Midnight Sun, but there actually is like a white gold shade just like this in Moonlit Seduction that's more like 
sparks even. So I just, I have these much fresher, better performing at this point versions of those and I don't feel compelled to keep those old pans. It's wild to say goodbye to them though. The only other ones giving me pause are lime chrome and these kind of blue shades which definitely define this palette. But I've never really liked the cream formula and I've never really liked this one either. I, I always get frustrated by how thin and subtle it is. This is really pretty shadow but it's just, I'm, I'm I mean, I'd be keeping them as novelties and not as things that I use a lot. And Lime Chrome, mm, maybe I should keep it. I have Cleona shadows that do what this does. And again, they're, they've are they got more texture and are a little more satisfying to work with. And they're really like live wires still in my makeup collection, whereas this isn't. So that's it. I'm going to keep these three shadows from the gold palette. Oh my goodness. If ever there was a time to be like, thank you for your service. You know what I mean? Like, thanks for all the memories. This is that time. I'm letting it go with joy. Okay, let's talk about e.l.f. Opposites Attract. So the primary use value of this palette for me is to like take it out and wave it around whenever there's a palette on the market that everyone's going bananas over as an example of a drugstore version. Because for some reason, there are just a ton of palettes that kind of look like this or a ton of palettes that come out for which there's a dupe for almost every shade in this palette. It's just super versatile. Again, like the balance of the tones is really good. The degree to which each one is pushed a little bit in the direction of grunge or a little bit in the direction of duskiness. It's really good. I think that the color story is just subtle. It's like it's elf, but the color story is high end. This mustard, this sort of foresty green, this very grungy kind of blackened brown that looks exactly like the with a little bit of purple. You know, that looks just like that shade in the Lila palette that I talked about really loving. We rarely see this much subtlety. It's like the Pharaoh and Ball paint colors. You know what I mean? We rarely see it at the drugstore price point. This kind of level of color intelligence. And for that reason, I just, I very often find this as a useful, I don't know, suggested alternative to buying something more expensive, but I don't really use it. I'm just out here using my Pat McGrath palettes almost exclusively all the time. So I don't need to keep this. Let it be known that this is a great drugstore palette. This is the last time that I'm going to remind you that it exists and it might be a great alternative to spending more on something else. It has served that purpose many a time. And now it's time for it to go. Okay, this amazing ZC palette. I really like the ZC eyeshadows and I think it's pretty obvious why I've kept this palette all this time. It's because of this amazing thing that we have never seen the equal of. I actually also really like this one down here. I like that all over the lids as well. I wonder if I can get these out. I don't think they're removable, but that one felt kind of loose when I was swatching it. Hmm, swatch out. The orange kind of comes out of the gold and it's really pretty on the eyes. You can build it up to basically be that, you know, but see how much more neutral it looks in the pan. And then the warmth kind of comes out of the gold when you swatch it. If I can get it out, I'll keep it. But if I can't, I'm okay with decluttering it. That little subtle quality of color makes me feel okay, more okay about parting with it. It came right out. It's not supposed to. There's glue in there, but uh, I think the glue had just come loose. This one too. Yeah, that one I had to break the glue, but it was soft enough. I'm just using this paper towel to press them more firmly back in so they won't make a mess. <laughs> There's still glue on the bottom of this one. I'm gonna have to stick magnets to them because they're not magnetized, but I have some spare magnets that I can do that with. Well, that was very satisfying. I feel like with the palettes that I've been keeping kind of just for one eyeshadow, I've in most cases been able to rescue that eyeshadow. Or I mean, in the case of the gold palette, the, the three. It's just jungle lights from which I did not extract the one. All right, this is another thing that I've been dreading. Like when I think about this declutter, I think, oh my gosh, what do I want to do about Angie's palettes? It's my friend, Anjelica Niekvist. She is so good at designing palettes. And this is her collab with Kaleidos Club Nebula. And this is her collab with Odin's Eye. I actually 
actually use them kind of a lot because the formulas are good. And well, here's what I do. I use like a third of each one of them kind of a lot. So what I tend to use in the Club Nebula palette is these purples. I just love the way that they blend out these mattes. I also tend to reach for these blues a lot when I'm duping the vibes. And sometimes when I'm doing that, this palette will sort of push me out of my comfort zone. In this one, the Odin's Eye one, it's this dark shiny black that I absolutely can't get enough of. This dark plum, really sooty, incredible. The shade name is Soot, can't get enough. And River, which is like a shiny, you know, a banging duochrome or even a multi-chrome. It's funny, it's the mattes. And I mean, that's so Angie because she's amazing with colorful mattes and dark mattes. And even though matte shadows aren't what I tend to use, when I do want them, I want these sort of extremely well-formulated, subtly color-balanced, deep mattes. And she just knows what to pick. Like she knows how to pick them when it comes to that category. So having these open before me, I'm realizing what happens is I'll be doing an eye look with something else, like one of my Pat McGrath palettes, and I will open this palette to use soot and sometimes this shiny one, complete, or I'll open this palette to use Cylon or Rockhopper, Queen of Blades, or sometimes Void. I do really like the packaging, especially of Club Nebula. It's really satisfying, solid, feels like an art piece, has that gorgeous Kaleidos artwork. This is also very beautiful just as a piece of art, but they don't really, how can I say this? It, the style, like stylistically, the packaging is kind of in a different aesthetic category than actually almost all the rest of the palettes that I'm keeping. Let's bring everything else back in order to finish making this decision. Everything else that I'm keeping. Okay, so this is too many for me. I know this is not what I had in mind when it comes to an eyeshadow edit. Right away, uh, I think I now have the, the bravery to let go of Kaleido's Flower Punk, even though I just really love it as an object. My desire to really, really condense and whittle is coming into play now in this last wave, and it's helping me cut the cord. The other thing about it is that if I want color, I actually do have, in the funniest place, right, I have this kind of unusual for me blue. And even though these aren't, this is like sea green, teal, and this is like a glowing periwinkle. I so rarely go in this direction that to me, they kind of serve the same purpose. I'll happily use the one, this one in the Gucci palette anytime I want something like that. So it's hard to declutter Angie's palettes, partly because I do find myself opening them and using them for these practical purposes time and time again. So they have qualities that I actually appreciate interacting with. They have use value for me. But it's also because she's my friend and she did such a great job and these are like celebrations of her. And I don't want to like give the impression that I'm rejecting that or that I don't value that. You know, it's like an amplified version of having a sentimental attachment to something and making it hard to get rid of that thing in a declutter for that reason. And it helps me in that case to remember that I did dedicated video reviews of each one of these. So I did a whole video of this, doing a look with it, talking all about the colors during the formulas. Same thing with this one. I'll try to remember to link those down below. I think it's exceedingly clear in both of those videos that I think that she smashed it, but I think it makes sense. And I think it would also make sense to Angie knowing like my style and the way that I use makeup that for long-term practical use, there would just be a couple of shades, one or two shades in each one of these that would kind of fit with what I do. And in this moment, on the occasion of this declutter, I'm letting go of things that fit that definition for me in the day-to-day. -day. They are great, and I'm so grateful that I got the chance to use and review them. But... This right here, this right here is what I had in mind. This is an eyeshadow palette collection that I can consider every piece of every time I'm going to do my eyeshadow, that I can keep in a drawer. It's not even going to fill the drawer. It's just going to fill part of the drawer that I can look at and touch every day or every time I do my makeup. And then I can use effortlessly over and over and over again without feeling like there's any kind of dead weight, anything extra being saved for later 
furniture save for special occasions, store it on the side, anything like that. Is it going to make it harder for me to dupe the vibes sometimes? Yes, especially because I'm about to declutter my single eyeshadows as well, and I expect to be potentially equally ruthless. But that's okay. I hear from you all all the time that you're surprised at how easy it is for you to dupe the vibes even though you only have a couple of eyeshadow palettes. We like what we like, and when we're drawn to something and we want to recreate it on our own eyes, if we like it, it's probably the case that we already have something kind of like it. I think I will be able to dupe the vibes with what's here. But if I can't, if I if I find myself wanting to create certain makeup looks and I turn to this eyeshadow palette collection and I can't make the look that I'm imagining, if I can't dupe the vibes on camera, that'll tell me something, right? Maybe it'll tell me that I actually want a little bit of a more robust eyeshadow palette collection than I thought that I wanted. And then I'll act accordingly. But in this moment, I feel like I have everything that I need right here. The color story altogether is very pleasing to me me as well. And it makes me feel even better about all of the decisions that I've made. So that is it. Wow, what a day. What a declutter. The single eyeshadows that I saved from some of these palettes I decluttered, they will feature soon in my single eyeshadow declutter. So keep an eye out for that. We'll be revisiting those. Palette-wise, this is it. I could not be more excited to put these palettes back in my makeup collection to like find a place for them and use them from that place. I really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for spending all of this time with me. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to be subscribed. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Please take a screenshot of this, Joe, if you're editing this. Take a screenshot now.